glad that you came back today to see me. I was just checking out something in the New Testament. Oh, how do you like my t-shirt? Let me tell you what it says. It says, you may not like me, but Jesus thinks I'm to die for. You like that? I like my t-shirts. <laughs> Some people think that that's a little strange. Why did you like t-shirts? You're a teacher. Well, uh, God uses all types and that's what we're going to talk about today. Because, mm, let's see. Some people label behaviors that they think that are different. Um, they might they may think that they're foolish or wrong. But uh, we're going to get to hear how God uses everyday people to bring glory to him. Let's put on the share screen here. All right, so here is our lesson for today. It's called Proof Positive. Proof Positive. You know what those two words mean? Of course you do. Proof means you have to have some evidence. Positive is uh, the opposite of negative. Proof Positive. That means it's evidence that is for certain and our, from our this is our fifth lesson, and it's from Lesson Scripture from Matthew, the 11th chapter, and the 7th through 19th verses. Oh, you were saying that pretty good. I heard you. The key verse is wisdom is proven right by her deeds. From Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 19th verse. B. Hmm. That's something new. B means that there's a part A and a part B to the scripture. It's not divided like that, but that means usually in these lessons, it's going to take a separate part of that scripture. Of course, you're primary two, and this lesson is for July 20th, and you are in Miss Kathy's class. And Miss Kathy is glad to have you here today. Let's see what's going on here. All right, before we start anything, you know we have to talk to God. And it's also your turn again. This time we're gonna talk about a different kind of prayer. We're gonna do a different kind of prayer. And it is a prayer of gratitude. And prayer of gratitude can be one line, uh, two lines, it, it doesn't have to be all long purposeful statement or anything because all it is is just expressing thanks gratitude means thankfulness and everyone has something to be grateful for what you can't think of anything well i'm sure that there are a lot of things that you can be great thankful for and i'm sure that you'll get a little idea around here from some play let's see so let's see, you think you can think of some now? All right, so I'm going to count to three. You're gonna stop the video and then pick up again after you finish praying. And here's what you can do with this prayer. Include everyone that's in the room, hold hands and take turns making a statement of gratitude. God, thank you for, then the next person goes on and on and on until they come back Till everyone has prayed and then are given a one line prayer of thanks. That's what we call it, a one line prayer of thanks. And then everyone says, Amen. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Are you done? Okay, now we can get started. We're going to play this little game, proof positive game. We have some heroes. We have some people who are part of our, let's see. People that God used, people who are used by God to do great things. Oh, he used them to his glory. So here's what you can do. You can do this two, one of two ways. You can stop the video and you and your parents can sit down and say, let's match these people over here. 
with these events over here. Okay, so you have David. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's get an annotator. You can even um like maybe do like draw a line over to the person or just say, I think that David goes with here and Esther goes there and Gideon and so on. And the other two are Mary and Moses. You think you can do it? I'm gonna give you a few minutes. Let me take the little eraser out here. Erase that little line. And we're gonna stop again and see if you can match them together. And then come back and we'll see if you're correct. One, two, three. All right, did you do that? Okay, let's see if you're right. Let's see. I am the least in my family. It's number one from the least. Okay, you know, probably read them if you, when you stop the video, okay? Let's see who is correct. Oh, David's going to move first. Where is David going? What answer? Which one is he going? Number four, David. I was a shepherd boy who killed Goliath. Later, I became king. I wrote many of the Psalms, while my wise son Solomon wrote the Proverbs. And that is David. Did you get that one right? Let's see where the second one goes. Oh, well, there's Gideon. Let's see where he's going. Gideon, where are you going? Gideon's going to number one. I am the least in my family and from the least of the tribes of Israel. God used me and 300 men to defeat an army of 135,000. Wow. Mm. Gideon, that is a miracle. Only can be done with God. Esther's traveling around here. Unless Esther goes to number two. The king chose me to be his wife because I was beautiful the king's advisor haman tried to get my cousin mordecai killed but haman's plan backfired on him oh let's see who's next mary's moving she's moving she's oh wait she's going all around the town here there she is she lands on number three god chose me to be the vessel for bringing his only son into the world Oh, that's what Mary did. Let's see what Moses did. He's the last one. So he has to wait. You know, he's got to travel all around because he's in the desert for 40 years. Ah, God told me to return to Egypt and get my people free from slavery. I wrote the Pentateuch or the five first five books in the Bible. Oh, did you get all those right? Well, if you didn't, I hope you learned something. All right. Let's see. We're going to look at proof positive, the story of proof positive straight from the source. And the source is our NIV Bible. Do you have one of your own yet? All right. There is there are some other good Bibles for kids. The boys and girls Bible. The boys used to be um pink. I keep I'm, I'm looking for the uh, link to that again. I'm going to post it maybe in the YouTube um, channel because those were good. They could take you on through middle school, I believe. They were really good. Um, and they had little notes. The boys had little notes for boys and the girls had little notes for girls. And uh, the girls were really jewelry covered and little sparklies on them. They were really nice nice study bibles for kids and someone who's big and in second grade and third grade they're awesome but here we are straight from the source key verse wisdom is proved right by her deeds and uh matthew the 11th chapter and the 19th verse b part b the key verse is written in red and there's a lot of red on this page but i want you to remember if you have a red letter Bible, here's my poem to remember. Everything in red is what Jesus said. So you see, he spoke a lot today. Here's my little picture of him. He's, talking, he's, he's telling you something today. We start with, this is the 11th chapter. We start with the seventh verse. And it tells you what's going on. As John's disciples were leaving, 
they had just heard him speak. Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are kings and palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is the one about whom is written, whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. Verse 17 is here. We have played the pipe to you, for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, he was a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Hmm. What do you think of that? Jesus had a lot to say in here, but I want to make something kind of clear over here. Over here, he's saying, he's asking people what did they expect to see because here's the thing. John the Baptist was a preacher who taught in the wilderness from the woods. He just lived off the land and he wore animal skins and he ate honey and locusts that he found out in the wild. Now, some people would say, they would look at that first and say, oh, I've got to see this weird guy who they're really talking about. But as strange and different as he was to people, what he was telling them was the truth. And God had put him there to tell them that Jesus was coming, why Jesus was coming, and that they needed to get ready. In the meantime, yes, they were cousins. So you heard me say that they were cousins. Because if you remember earlier in the book of Matthew, Jesus was about to be born and his mother Mary went to see her cousin who was expecting John the Baptist. So here is Jesus, also different, a different kind of preacher. He started preaching when he was a child. And because you know why he's also deity. That means he's also a God. Jesus was different because he didn't have a place to sleep. He talks about that. He walked around and he hung around with sinners and tax collectors. They lumped tax collectors in that group because tax collectors, uh, just like America was a colony, the United States was was a colony at first. Um, the Romans had come to colonize this part of the world where Jesus and John the Baptist lived. And they collected taxes. Or what they did was they, they didn't have everybody there because the rest of their people were their main, their headquarters, or so to speak, was in Rome, Rome, Italy, a long, long way. So you can't say, tax collector, I need you to come over and come down here to the Israel area and I want you to collect taxes. Instead, it was little 
less expensive and a little more convenient if they got somebody from the area. So they would hire Jewish people from the area to collect taxes. And sometimes they weren't that honest with the Romans. They would take some of the money and keep it for themselves. So the Jewish people at that time considered them as um, traitors. You're going to collect taxes from the people who hold us, who hold our country hostage, who are just taking over our land. You're going to collect taxes from them. So they didn't like them. So that's why tax collectors are lumped together. In them. So these two cousins, preachers, called by God, one is God, and as well as the Son of God, they are strange. They're different. Okay, so now we're going to go to the lesson in the book. And um, if when you look in this, look for this in your Bible, I want you to look a little before here. You see these black letters up here. This is not what Jesus said. This is narration before. So look a little bit before that and see what's going on. And you might even want to little, look a little bit after. That's a good thing to do when we're, when we're looking at any part of our Bible, okay? So let's go see what the lesson book says, because the lesson book always makes things a little bit easier to understand. And now that I've given you some background as well to this chapter, uh, that might help you to understand it a little better too. I hope it did. Okay, let's look at it. Now, when we get there, I want you to read along with me or just listen, whichever is best for you, okay? Oh, I forgot. We have to look at some more words to help us to understand that chapter as well. Let's see. The messenger, that's a person who carries and delivers packages and messages. Do you know someone like that? How about someone in the neighborhood that you see every day or almost every day? Well, you said the post office truck, UPS truck, yes, FedEx, you see the FedEx people. And then there's a palace, the official home of a king or queen mm, or other persons of high rank. Ah, oh, palace. Would you like to live in a palace? Well, we do think of kings and queens as living there. Then a prophet. Prophet is a person who tells the future. And we're going to put these two words together, prophet and messenger. Because for God, a prophet is his messenger. Okay? Sort of like his own personal UPS guy. Uh, or the um, United States Post Office woman. Okay? Tax collector, we talked about that, a person who collects money, such as fees or taxes. Wisdom, this is the fifth time we've had wisdom. Um, I, I always include it in there again when I see it. Good judgment and, outs and an understanding of that which is true or good. All right, now let's see our story. Proof positive. When John the Baptist's followers were walking away, Jesus began talking to the crowds about him. Jesus asked, what did you go out to the desert to see? Did you go out to see the grass blowing in the wind or a man dressed in fine clothes? The answer to both these questions was no. A man that dresses in fine clothes lives in a palace. Jesus said, you went to see a prophet. John is more than a prophet. The scriptures say this about him. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Jesus continues by saying, John the Baptist is greater than any other man who ever lived, but even the least important person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. John came and he did not eat like other people or drink wine. And people said, he has a demon. When the son of man came, eating and drinking wine, people said, look at him. He eats too much and drinks too much. 
He is a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but decisions made with wisdom are proved to be right. Oh, and I forgot to tell you about that. Number two, demon is just like um, God has his army. We think of them as winged folks up in heaven, angels, and those are his army. And the enemy, the devil, has his army as well. And they are called demons. And so they're saying that they think John is doing these strange things because he has one of the uh, devil's army inside of him, controlling him. Okay. All right. What do you think of that story? You got it? You understand it? I think you do. So it's time to answer some questions, okay? Let's look at these questions. What did Jesus ask the crowd? Yes, they asked what they, he asked what they had gone out into the desert to see. What did you go to see? Did you go to see grass growing in the wind? All right. True or false? John the Baptist was a prophet. That's right. That is true. What was John the Baptist's role? What was his job? Yes, he was the messenger that came before Jesus. Now, how was Jesus and John the Baptist different from each other? Yes, Jesus ate and drank with sinners and tax collectors, and John the Baptist did not drink wine. John the Baptist also ate things he came across uh, in the wilderness. He caught locusts and ate um, honey. Hmm, things, one thing comes from an insect, and the other thing is an insect. That's what he was eating. All right, you have in your book, A Fun Expedition. You're gonna stop the video again, rewrite the statements, and then come back and let's see if you got them all right, okay? And if you don't get them all right, that's okay. We're gonna get them all right today, okay? One, two, three, stop. All right, do you finish writing your questions? Did you get your parents to help you or you did you do it by yourself? Either way, it's great. You're still learning, all right? Number one, Jesus began talking to a crowd of people about John the Baptist. Number two, John the Baptist had a very important job. Highlighting the main answer. You see those answers there? Highlighting John the Baptist in heaven. And number three, Jesus ate with the tax collectors and sinners. All right, did you get all those right? I hope so. Because it's time for the contemporary story, a, to a story that's up to date these times. The Bible stories, um, the people then, are from antiquity or a long, long, long time ago. But this is a story that's updated and modern for today, for today's time. And the name of the story, our contemporary story is From Ordinary to Extraordinary. You can read along with me if you want, or you don't have to, okay, whatever's comfortable for you. Camille was used to being looked over. She was the youngest of seven children. So she surprised, she was surprised when her teacher asked her to be on the school's science Olympiad team. She could not wait to tell her parents. Ma, Dad, you're not gonna believe what happened in class today, Tamia shouted. 
slow down to me, huh? We can barely understand what you're saying, Dad responded. Mr. Matthews picked me to represent the class for the Science Olympiad team. For the next month, we're going to study science concepts and compete against other schools in our district, Tamir shared. Oh, that sounds like the kind of thing that you would enjoy, Mom replied. At first, I said no, because the other members are older and have competed before. I'm just ordinary, Tamiya explained. I'm sure Mr. Matthews chose you because he thought you could help the team, Dad assured her. He said he has never had a student who loves science as much as I do, Tamiya replied. I guess that makes you extraordinary, Mom commented. I don't know about that, but I'm going to do my best on the team, Tamiya said. Are you in any clubs and things in your schools in the organization? Oh, there's. it's a good thing. It's a good idea to be. I hope you have something that you have of interest to be uh, a part of at your school. Or they use your talents to the glory of God at your church. Here are some questions from the contemporary story. What team did Mr. Matthews ask Tamiya to be a part of? Can you write your answer? Let's see. He asked her to be a part of the Science Olympiad. What was Tamiya's um, initial response? That means her first answer, her first thought. She said no, because she was the youngest on the team and she said that she was just ordinary. Why did Tamiya change her mind? Mr. Matthews said that she was a good choice because she loved science. Now, if you didn't word your answers just like that, it doesn't mean that they're incorrect. You can have your answers in your own words. Now, in Ruby's lab, which is in your book, you should do that with your parents, okay? Have a discussion, especially when the lesson's all over and you can have uh, discussions about what you talk about in your class and your parents are talking about what they had in their class. And you put it all together and you've got a family Bible study. How about that? So if you have a book, read Ruby's Lab with your parents. As you listen to Ruby, think about what she says and discuss her statements and observations. Complete Ruby's mission. Did you complete the mission from last week? If you did, oh, I'd certainly like to hear it. I'd like to see it. So get your parents take a picture or send me an email. They should have my email, okay? Send it and let me see it because I'd love to see it. All right. We're going to have a little lesson review. The lesson is from the New Testament. If you remember, our lessons in the past weeks have been uh, long before Jesus was born, and they were all in the Old Testament. They were all from King Solomon, who was great, 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 great. And King David was great, 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 great grandfather of, that you have to go back 42 generations. So I'm not going to say all 42 great, great, greats. You just know it's 42 generations behind uh, Jesus, all right? After John the Baptist preached, Jesus asked the crowd what they had gone out into the desert to see. John the Baptist, who was Jesus' cousin, was preparing the way for Jesus. His role was to be the messenger that came before Jesus. And what's another word for that? It starts with a P. Oh, did you say prophet? Then you were right. The cousins were quite different from each other. They were quite different or being preachers like 
Some thought they were foolish, but they were very wise. Why did they think they were foolish? Because they were different. They weren't like the ordinary. It would be like someone today um, who preaches and you're used to seeing them all dressed up in a suit or at least in a button down shirt. And then here someone comes along and they preach to you and they're having a super t-shirt. Might be different, but it doesn't mean that they're not wise and that they don't have a word of God to share with you, right? So that is the main thing to remember about this lesson. Jesus ate and drank with the sinners and tax collectors. That was one difference. Uh, and John the Baptist did not drink wine, but he ate locusts and honey. The key verse says, wisdom is proved right by her deeds, not by what a person eats or drinks, not by what a person wears, not by who a person's with. Well, why is Jesus hanging around with these people that are supposed to be bad? Let's take a think of a, a, a look at that. Let's think about that for a minute. Why do you think? So let me put it this way. So if you have to go to the hospital, and uh, you have to have a doctor to come and see you in the hospital. So, are you ill or are you well? Most of the time, all the time, if you have to go to the hospital, you must be pretty ill, right? So, why would your doctor go to, say, um, a Target store or someplace else instead of coming to see you if you were ill. And if you're not ill, you don't go to the hospital. So the doctor goes where there are sick people. So Jesus went where there are people that needed mending, that needed his help to become, come back over to the good side. So he didn't need to hang out with the good people. They were already good. They were already going to heaven. He was going to help those people who needed a little more help to get there. I hope that helped. Is that the same thing that you thought of? Okay. So that is the end of our lesson for today. Like I said, always so glad to have you here. Always so glad to talk to you. So. I'm gonna go on and get ready for the next lesson and some other things that I have to do. Um, maybe read some more of Matthew in the New Text Testament. You think you'll be doing the same? Until I see you the next time, it's a good idea. Okay, well, I'm gonna miss you until next week. I hope you miss me because I'll be praying for you and I hope you pray for me too. And I love you. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.